It was a normal Monday morning on October 27, 2003. And every Monday morning I'd play basketball at the Y. And so it was no different. I played the first game and we ended up losing 11 to 10. I went to the sideline and leaned against the wall. And at that point, I had apparently put my head between my legs and I went out. They didn't know that I was going through sudden cardiac arrest at that point. But once they did, they quickly went into action. I apparently stopped breathing. And by that time, the executive director, who's a trained Red Cross instructor for the AED machine, showed up with the head of the lifeguards. And the first jolt apparently brought me back. I was told that uh, I was dead for approximately the second time for about five minutes. The one thing that we wanted to do was to get our son Ed um, back home to, to be with his dad. Um, he was up in Watertown at Fort Drum. We knew that he was out in the fields, that he was being trained for deployment uh, to Iraq. I called the Red Cross. The first sergeant and the captain came out and said the Red Cross had called and said that my dad had a heart attack and they got me right out of the field right away. And within hours they called me back to say that he was on his way home. When I woke up in uh, the hospital bed, I looked and my son was standing next to me and at that point I was amazed that the Red Cross was able to not only find him but actually traffic him back to Albany and to my bedside. My husband is here today because somebody took the time to be trained by the Red Cross and the Red Cross took the time to train that person and I will be grateful for the rest of my life. It was on December 3rd, uh, about 6 o'clock in the evening, my wife and I were working and our friend uh, called us and told us our home was on fire. When we got home, the, the house was engulfed in flames. There were flames just pouring out of every window. I started breaking down in tears. I just didn't know what was going to happen. The fire chief asked me, do you have any place to go? And I. I just looked at him and I said, no, I don't. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And he said, well, I'll call the Red Cross for you. The woman from the Red Cross, she would've spent the whole night with us. She was so helpful. She, she wanted to help us in every way possible. She uh, brought us right down to a motel to stay at for the night. Um, made sure we were, we were okay. Two days after the fire, I went down to the Red Cross and I met with Barbara. First thing we did was just sit and talk and just let her talk everything out and how she felt and how scared she was and how she just never thought anything like this would happen. She just touched my heart. <laughs> we pretty much lost everything with the clothes on our backs. It, it was so overwhelming. We hadn't even thought about some of the things that we would need. They had no idea that Red Cross was going to be able to help them as much as we could. They needed um, assistance with lodging and food and clothing and um, landlord verification so that we could give them uh, security. They really lightened the load for us around the holidays. They lightened the load for us in, in life. They, they helped us over a really rough patch that I don't know that we would have been able to bounce back from. They, they help you with nothing but caring and, and honesty and compassion. They just appreciated everything so much. I mean, right down to the little teddy bear that we gave the children. Being so close to the holidays and not exactly the time of the year where people have a lot of extra money, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And the Red Cross stepped in and made a Christmas possible for my children. They made a home possible. Um, and I'll never be able to thank them enough for that. What organization has more of a history and does more to help people than the American Red Cross? It's, it's amazing that you have an organization that's so grassroots at the local level, but at the same time, it's, it's all over the world. We serve eight counties and 872,000 people. It's a very large geography. One of the largest uh, Red Cross chapters geographically in the entire eastern United States. We rely on volunteers for, for very much of what we do. 
I wanted something where I could uh, be active in the community, help some of the people that were in my community, because I, I think I'm pretty fortunate, and I felt that I wanted to give back to that community a little bit. Our volunteers involved in health and safety training, our volunteers are involved in uh, collection of blood, uh, volunteers are involved in our armed forces programs. We always tell prospective volunteers that if, uh, if there's something you're interested in, we can find a volunteer opportunity for you at our chapter. Our volunteers are available 24-7 to respond to disasters. They will get up in the middle of the night, in the middle of the winter, and drive 60 miles to help somebody they've never met before. I'm always amazed when we respond to disasters like fires, how significant our role is, that we are the only people there helping the disaster victims many times. Preparing more people for disasters is an, an essential part of what, what we need to do more of. There are so many people that are not prepared for disasters in any way. And when you think about it, if we helped a thousand fire victims a year, that's a lot of people. And we all think it's never going to happen to us, but unfortunately it does. It happens to more and more people every year. One of our important initiatives now was to build more youth programming into our chapter. It's critical that we begin to develop the next generation of Red Cross volunteers, the next generation of Red Cross supporters. I absolutely love the work I do. I, it, it's so rewarding and so fulfilling. It's a community where volunteers come in and help here, where people will donate their time, where people will donate their money, where people will donate their blood. Really the incredible generosity of our community. An elderly woman just touching your hand saying, oh, I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful for, for what you're doing. Just, just the little things like that, that that warm you up inside. We provide help and hope in this community in a way that no other organization does. The Red Cross is, is my family and is my community, and I really feel good that the small donations that people give from my community, I can give right back to them and, and help them out.